Animal Logic has a broad and long history of innovating in this kind of space. The key thing that we've really been thinking about uh, most recently is this idea of new workflows. So we had this idea that we really wanted to start to try and bake down our film assets into game type assets and then see what kind of workflows we could develop in the real-time space. The Warner Brothers marketing team had a really, really good idea to use real-time animation to join HQ Trivia and LEGO. HQ Trivia is this amazing kind of game show where, you know, hundreds of thousands of people simultaneously log in at the same time and they play a game show. That, as it turns out, can be augmented by uh, including LEGO minifigs. Scott, who's the host, we're going to turn him into a minifig and he is going to uh, ask his questions uh, as per normal, but in the shape of a real-time minifig. I grew up playing with LEGOs, obviously, to think that I'm a minifig now in this whole world that we created. It was surreal. It's me! The Brick Bob Barker! The technology stack we're using is we have the motion capture suit and the phone sending data to Unreal Engine. We've used Unreal for everything you see here. So it's the one environment where basically everything is brought in. We've converted the assets from the movie pipeline into Unreal. We are basically sending data from the phone into Unreal, all of that in real time. The minifig itself is very limited in the range of motion it can have, right? So what we did is retargeted the capture by moving my arms out, for example. You'll see that the arms are not responsive. If I move them forward, it's picking up a lot more. And the facial animation is designed to look like you just had different heads and you're swapping them. So how do we sort of take what the camera is reading inside the phone and translate it to the very limited sort of facial expression that a LEGO minifig has? Uh, and still stay true to the canon of basically how these characters move and behave in the movie. Emmett, you gotta stop pretending everything is awesome. One of the key things about the render times on the film, uh, and particularly something like the Lego Movie 2, is that we put huge amounts of complexity into those frames. So facial animation, you know, takes any given animator a week to produce five seconds. And what we're trying to do is cram all of that work into 30 frames a second, if not more, uh, and have it be driven by a performer. The lighting effects on my hair, on the body, if I tilted a different way, you saw it glint off my, my plastic body, you could see the thumbprints. The attention to detail was phenomenal. It sort of opens up a whole new possibility, I think, what we can do. Think about it, we can be creating characters, doing all sorts of interactive games live and targeting different audiences. I think kids really enjoyed this. We had a lot of feedback on just the last 20 minutes on Twitter. My 10-year-old was going nuts. They loved the Lego movie. They loved Lego Scott, Scott Brakowski. So it was, uh, it was eye-opening to, to see you know, what we can achieve here. Epic has been incredible, they've been really helpful. After bringing all of these kind of disparate technologies together and bringing all of these people into this kind of uh, completely uncharted territory, everybody that was involved really enjoyed the process uh, and I think um, anything that involves kind of exploratory possibilities and those types of things is always going to be a benefit to all of us. Um, so it's just incredible to, to actually have it all, you know, work out as well as it did. Until I see you all again, Scott Brakowski here, signing off. <laughs>